All right. Hi, everyone. This is Mark, and this video is going to go over how to get a 7 or higher on the IELTS Academic Task 1. And this one is describing a process or a flowchart that you're going to get. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. Please watch the video uh, until the end, or at least check the part you need to know. Uh, now, this will go over the strategies you need to get a top score in grammar. All right, that part I'll talk about at the very end. Also, we'll go over some of the key tips for vocabulary. Also, task achievement. That means, are you saying everything you need to say in this exam or in this writing task? And finally, cohesion. So how you connect your ideas and organize them. So please remember, watch until the end, because I'll go through them all very carefully. Uh, and if you just want to go to the end and get the grammar, and I, that, that's a good idea, you can take a look at that as well. All right, so remember, we're describing a process. Let's take a look. Here we are. We've got this process. Maybe you've seen this before. <clears throat> if you read up here, it says, the diagrams below show that the life cycle of a silkworm and the stages in the production of silk cloth. Uh, summarize the information by selecting and reporting main features and make comparisons where relevant. So, in some ways this one is a little easier, in some ways a little more challenging. Uh, there's less data in this one. So, in my videos we talk about trend and data. You don't necessarily have to do that as much here. Also, the overall will be a lot simpler. You just have to make sure that you uh, find and, and state what the main idea is here. Remember, you're doing analysis of information and data. You have to practice this just like you have to practice your English. All right, you're not just an English learner, you're studying economics and data analysis. So you really have to do that here. Okay, so first, my advice would be to pause the video, take five minutes, and I want you to look at this. All right, you've got the two titles, you've got two clear sections. Take a minute, make some notes, uh, write down your ideas, and I will see you in five minutes. This is really important. All right, welcome back. And, uh, well, what did you see? Now, in this case, Nothing's really increasing or decreasing. As I said, it's pretty straightforward. You can see there are two main processes, all right? Two main parts or two main cycles involved in making silk, the final cloth product um, that comes from the silkworm. Now, let's take a look at the main notes here. So as I said, uh, we are looking at overall and that's right here. Overall, you've got two stages, all right? So you've got the silkworm stage, when the silkworm is born and it becomes a moth, and the second one, which is the production of silk cloth. Now, two stages, that's good. A little bit better, highlight. One of them is natural, one of them is industrial, all right, or manufacturing. So you've got two stages. Now, as I said, Good. You want to get that overall statement. What is the main overall trend you see here? The macro trend, if you will. And that's here. One is natural, one is industrial. All right, so that's your first point. Now, the tough part is subject. It is probably a good idea if you're taking the academic exam. You know, take a, you know, when you're preparing, remind yourself. Study a little bit about insects. What are these key words? Larva is a key word. That's this little guy here. As you can see, luckily, they give you the word. But also, they've got that word egg. Now, you should probably know, what do eggs do? Well, they hatch. So again, another key word to be aware of. All right. Uh, also, they've got silk here. That's very important. Now, a couple of good pieces of vocabulary, right? And you can see them. Uh, here you've got that they, one, spin, all right? So that's a key word for you. Moths or, sorry, worms spin a cocoon. That's useful. Another one, weave, all right? That's when you put threads together. 
you can see that down here. All the threads are getting put in these two ways. You're weaving. And here's the tricky part. It's an irregular verb. Wove, woven. You want to really impress and get a good vocabulary grammar score. You've got that word. And wind, the past of wind is wound. That's another thing people don't always know. Wound is the past form of wind. Okay, so you've got your main notes here. So first of all, you're going to give the overall, your next paragraph, oh, then your next paragraph, you will talk about the natural process, and in the paragraph after that, the industrial process. So keep that in mind. That one's pretty easy. Paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three. Right? As I said, a little bit easier. So why don't we take a look at our final product. All right. So the diagram shows the steps involved in processing silk cloth. So here you go. Uh, you know, just take this sentence and quickly, in 10 seconds, write it out. It's not very important. Don't spend a lot of time trying to find different ways to say these words. It's just not a good use of your time. Uh, I, people don't like this, but I say, even if you just copy it, uh, it doesn't, you know, just do it because you want to get to this part, which is important. Now, I'm not saying you should copy it, but I'm just making the point that if you copy it, it's about as good as trying to take every single word and slightly change it. All right. Anyway, you must write this sentence, but it's not that important that you spend so much time on it. Then the overall, the production requires. All right. So again, I'm already starting with cohesion, processing silk cloth. There's my first point. And then the production. All right. So that's referencing this. In my first two sentences, I'm getting that cohesion score. My sentences are clicking together beautifully. They're linked very well. The production requires two separate processes. All right, that doesn't need to be there. All right, one is natural, the other is industrial. Now I'll talk about this later. I've got a semicolon here. Subject verb, subject verb. All right. And if you want to go a little further and get a nice, nicer score for grammar, you can even do this. Because you've already got is here, you can just say one is natural, the other is industrial. So if you get a similar task on your exam, you can use that idea. Then, the first diagram. All right, connecting word, the first diagram. All right, cohesion. You could just start with first, or first of all, that's fine. This works as well. And remember, to get those really high scores in IELTS, they want other types of connectors, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The first diagram shows, always remember, third person singular, it shows, the four stages involved in the life of a silkworm. So I've decided to show that you've got one, two, three, four steps involved here. Actually, we're going this way, sorry, one, two, three, four. All right, these four steps involved and how they produce the raw silk product. All right. So you've just got that. The first diagram shows overall. So I know that the rest of the paragraph is talking about this. Remember, your first sentence should be overall. The first sentence tells me the whole paragraph. Don't just say first eggs. Don't start with this. First eggs are produced by the moth. Don't do that. Say the first diagram shows. That's your first paragraph. Then you go here, connector. First, eggs are produced by the moth. All right, fine, simple, it stays like that, all right? So you've got the eggs produced by the moth. These eggs become silkworm larva, all right? Now, key point, connector. Don't just say second, but say these eggs, all right? Key point, because now these two sentences are well connected. These two, uh, sorry, these eggs become silkworm larva in, t in 10 days and begin to feed on leaves. Simple. This stage, all right, again, this here becomes this stage, lasts for up to six weeks, 
until the larva threads a cocoon around itself. So I've got that word thread as a verb. The larva threads a cocoon around itself. Then my next connector, after three weeks. Okay, so I've got my after three weeks, four to six weeks here. So instead of just saying after four to six weeks, I say after three weeks. The adult moth eventually emerges. Sorry, that's over here. And begins the life cycle again. Actually, that comes right out. And the life cycle begins again as the moth lays more eggs. All right. So I've got my key points here, all four points. I've put these two together. Um, you know, the larva become cocoons, all right, and then it becomes a moth and it lays more eggs, all right? So again, my key connectors after three weeks, this stage, it's as important as using these ones, all right? But remember, first, second, third, that's good, but these connecting words are a little bit more important, and a lot of times we don't talk about them in IELTS classes. Then, to make silk. So again, I've talked about making silk. So in less than one sentence, I've said we've got the final product. I could also say here, the next diagram shows, but then again, it's just a bit repetitive because I've already said that. So to make silk, the unhatched cocoons, so again, why it's important to know vocabulary. This is going to get you the vocabulary. The unhatched cocoons are taken and used for the production of silk cloth. All right, so again, overall. After being selected, so again, this part here, I'm connecting it, all right? They select the cocoon. After being selected, they are boiled in water where the threads are unwound. So you see here, I unwind them. That's right here. Boiled, unwound. These threads can be stretched out between 300. So again, I take the data here and I just write it out. Next connector, this provides enough length that they can be twisted together, dyed, and then woven together. So again, I need, they can be twisted. Pa so we got passive verbs here. Twisted, dyed, and then woven together. So past participle because it's the passive. All right, so it's a key point to study your passive grammar. They can be twisted dyed and woven together, and this creates the final silk material to be used. Okay, so a little bit easier and a little bit faster, but you still want to catch these main things. The main things you need to remember is your overall, uh, and of course, get that each paragraph has a clear topic, all right? Once you do that, the rest falls in. You know, usually the biggest problem is everyone just, uh, a lot of the tests, a lot of my, uh, you know, students when they're preparing for the test or new students will just put this all together and it's not very organized. So remember, each paragraph should have a single focus and put that here. Now, in the exam, they say you don't have to have paragraphs, but if you do, you're able to show more structure in your writing. So please do that. All right, so you can stop. If you want to look at that, that's fine. But why don't we take a look at some notes here? Okay. So just a couple of notes on grammar. Let's talk semicolons, all right? Remember, a semicolon has to have a subject and a verb. Then you have your semicolon, subject, verb. All right, if you have two sentences, which are linked. These are two sentences which are similar topics or they're extending the idea, then you can use a semicolon. Uh, some people don't like them. I think they're fantastic. If you learn how to use them, your writing will sing and your professors and your teachers will think your writing is pretty good. So one is natural, the other is industrial. So you've got subject verb, subject verb. So similar topic or related topics, so use your semicolon. Here is another one where I've done it. You can do this, you know, anytime you've got a process, all right? First, the eggs are produced by a moth, so you've got your subject verb, semicolon, 
these eggs become silkworm larvae. Subject verb again. All right, so that's a good one. Take a little extra time, learn that, very useful. Of course, you need to know your passive verbs. All right, so that means you've got your be verb and your past participle. Eggs are produced by the moth. The unhatched cocoons are taken. They are boiled. They can be twisted. They can be woven, all right? Anytime you've got that, the big problem is people forget this little part here on the regular verbs, or they just have some huge problem that's like, are took. Um, so make sure you get your correct passive verb forms. Remember, you guys want to get a seven or higher, so you want these to be accurate, all right? If they're not accurate, you're having a little less, um, it's going to be a little less easy to get that seven or higher. Uh, finally, or not finally, sorry, but important is participle clauses. Now, if you look at some of the other videos I've made, I use them a lot more here, but these are really useful. All right, so they're taken and woven together, which creates the final silk material, as you see here. Uh, where is it? They can be twisted together which creates the final silk thread. So look these up. Participle clauses are wonderful. They will help you to write more efficiently and with better cohesion and less vocabulary. So you can say more with less. Uh, and finally, again, referencing words. I use these a lot. This is more, well, not more, equally important to these type of words, right? First, however, next. You also need to have these eggs, all right, referencing this. 10 days, this stage. Again, threads, these threads, all right. Punctuation and referencing words are so important, and we focus so much on first, second, third, and that's great, but you also need these connectors. It's going to link all your ideas, and you'll have beautiful, beautiful paragraphs, all right. Final notes, you guys, final pieces of advice. Take five minutes to analyze, especially when you're practicing. When you're in class, you know, if you're in a class, tell your teacher, I'm going to take five minutes and analyze, organize, at least when you're practicing. So that, remember, you're not just practicing your English, you're practicing your analysis. And if your analysis isn't good, you're not going to have as high a score because you need to see these ideas especially when it's data, especially in the bar graph and in the line graph. Take five minutes. You know, when you're practicing, read newspapers, read the business news. That will give you data and practice doing it. Organize and make notes, all right? No one's gonna look at your notes, uh, so write down the ideas you get. Uh, it's a lot faster, all right? You're thinking, if I analyze for five minutes, then I only have 15 minutes to write the test. Well, you know what? If you don't know what to write, it's going to be hard. But if you take the five minutes and know exactly what you're going to do, then it's easy. And of course, you guys, this is really important. Practice, practice, practice. When, when I have students and they're in my class for, say, three months, they get really good at doing this. All right? They get really skilled at identifying the trend. And, you know, I sometimes see students who just, they constantly get low scores but then after practice, you know, it's beautiful. They get those sixes, 6.5s, 7s, and sometimes higher. So just remember, practice is going to make the big difference, all right? Get feedback from your teachers or get feedback from a friend. They can help you with your grammar, and you'll do very well. So please remember those steps. I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to leave a comment or like the video, and uh, good luck with your exams.